counter to our views, such truth is put to death by your mind and in your head. Therefore, God's Son, the truth and the light, is put to death at the place of the skull, our skull place, located somewhere between your ears. This putting to death of the light of hope in your mind is always accompanied by the two thieves. Regret for the past and fear of the future. Don't go away, folks. We have to take a short break. I'll be back right after this pause. son goes to his death wearing a corona, which in Latin means crown of thorns. Remember the Statue of Liberty? It was given to us by Masonic France. To this day, kings still wear a round crown of thorns symbolizing the rays of the sun. You now, as far back as we can go into the ancient world in our research, we find that all known cultures had a three-in-one or triune God. The very first trinity was simply the three stages of life of the sun. Newborn at dawn, mature or full-grown in its full power at twelve noon, and old and dying at the end of day, going back to the Father. All three were, of course, one divinity. The Trinity is no mystery in the mystery schools. The Egyptians knew that the sun was at its highest point in the sky, or high noon, when no shadow was cast by the pyramid. At that point, all Egypt offered prayers to the Most High God. As stated before to the ancients, the sky was the abode, or heavenly temple, of the Most High. Therefore, God's Son was doing His Heavenly Father's work in the temple at noon. The world of ancient man kept track of times and seasons by the movement of the sun, daily, monthly, and yearly. For this, the sundial was devised. Not only the daily movement of the sun was tracked on the round dial, but the whole year was charted on a round calendar dial. Examples are ancient Mexican, Mayan, Inca, Aztec, Sumerian, Babylonian, Assyrian, Egyptian, Celtic, or Celtic as some pronounce it, Aryan, etc. And with this method, certain new concepts emerged 
in the mind of ancient man. Since the earth experienced four different seasons, all the same and equal in time each year, the round calendar was divided into four equal parts. This represented the complete story of the life of God's Son. This is also why we have in the Bible only four Gospels. Of this point there can be no doubt, for Tertullian and many early church fathers stated this exact fact themselves in their own writings. And this, the mystery school claims, is why the famous painting of the Last Supper pictures the twelve followers or houses of the sun in four groups of three, the seasons, with the sun in the center alone. On the round surface of the yearly calendar, you draw a straight line directly across the middle, cutting the circle in half, one end being the point of the winter solstice, the other end being the point of the summer solstice. Then draw another straight line crossing the first one, one end of the new line being the spring equinox, the other end being the autumn equinox. You now have the starting points for each of the four seasons. This is referred to by all major encyclopedias and reference works, both ancient and modern, as the cross of the zodiac. Thus the life of God's Son is on the cross. This is why we see the round circle of the sun on the crosses of Christian churches. The next time you pass a Christian church, look for the circle, sun, on the cross. On December the 22nd, the sun going south reaches its lowest point in the sky, our winter solstice. At that lowest point, the sun stops moving on the sundial for three days, December 22nd, December 23rd, and December 24th, in the southern constellation known as the Southern Cross. Hence our Savior, dead for three days, died on the cross. The Southern Cross constellation that is. This is the only time in the year, folks, that the sun actually stops its movements in our sky, according to the mystery schools. On the morning of December the 25th, the sun begins its annual journey back to us in the northern hemisphere, bringing, of course, our spring. Therefore, on December 25th, the sun is born again. And to this day, his worshippers still celebrate his birthday. It is at this point that we should look at the significance of the recurring number 12 in the Bible. First, 13 is said to be unlucky for humans. It is a heavenly number and represents the Son plus the 12 equals 13, or Christ plus the 12 disciples equals 13. It's unlucky for a different reason, folks. And I will explain that on another program, but it has to do with the persecution of the mystery school, the mystery religion. It would be well to get a Bible concordance and look to see how many times the number 12 is used in the entire Bible. Remember, the mystery religion is a religion of the heavens. Also in the Bible you will find many combinations of the number seven in the mystery religion that represents the seven stars of the Pleiades. And you can see the emergence of the mystery religion in the UFO movement when the Pleiadians come to talk to Billy Meyer in Switzerland. <laughs> oh my, how we are deceived by these people. Here are a few examples of the use of the number twelve in the Bible the twelve months of the year, the twelve apostles of the sun, the twelve tribes of Israel, the twelve brothers of Joseph, the twelve judges of Israel, the twelve great patriarchs, the twelve Old Testament prophets, the twelve kings of Israel, the twelve princes of Israel, God's son at Temple